This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e learning to instructor led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. So in this lesson, we'll give you an overview of the different ways that you can customize SharePoint. So specifically, we'll be looking at the different methods, and then we'll give you a demo of customizing SharePoint in the browser. So first of all, the various different methods. Certainly, you can customize SharePoint straight through the browser interface. Uh, this is going to be you know, the basic things of applying a theme. We can do some basic edits of master pages or just choosing and changing which master page we want to apply. A master page is a CSS, a cascading style sheet uh, functionality or component that is a way of defining a look and feel uh, in one file that defines the overall sort of color scheme and structure of our buttons and layout of our pages and navigation. Um, and we apply that master page to every single page that we create in our site. And it creates a consistent, customized look and feel. Uh, so in the browser, we're not going to do a whole lot of editing of a master page, but in the browser, we can um, uh, choose which master page we want to utilize. So if we've copied up some new ones, we can go into the browser interface. And when I talk about the browser interface here, we're talking primarily about site settings. Right, so if I'm a top-level site administrator, site collection administrator, I can go in into the browser, go into the site settings uh, for my site, and I can apply a theme. Right? I can choose which master page I want to use. I can choose custom web parts, right? and I can customize those web parts. I can, in a browser, I can change the layout of my pages. Right? I want a web part here and a web part here. I want an image there. Uh, I want to change the title and what's sort of showing up um, I can change certain logo settings. Uh, there's a certain amount of stuff that I can do through the browser that's pretty basic customizations. Now, you can do that at every site level. Uh, and some of those themes, some of those elements don't trickle down all the way through the hierarchy. So you would have to go in and apply the same theme to every site and subsite if you wanted it to be consistent throughout. So it is quite um, extensive. A lot of the new browser um, customizations that you can do, the page design and page layout uh, has been greatly expanded in SharePoint 2010 compared to earlier versions like SharePoint 2003 and 2007. So in your browser now you have a new ribbon user interface that allows you to change the coloring, uh, allows you to change you know, the fonts that are used when you're writing content on a page, um, you know, allowing you to insert a picture or a document, uh, insert a video, insert something into the page. So the layout and the design of an individual page, um, there's a lot that you can do through the browser. The browser customization is what the majority of your power users, your um, designers are going to be using. And when I say designers, I mean the basic site designer, the site owners, basically. So they can customize and build their pages however they want. Now, other customizations will be a bit more extensive. You have a product called SharePoint Designer. Uh, SharePoint Designer is the new name for uh, Microsoft Front Page, which is an older product used for helping design and build websites. So Front Page evolved over the years to be really just focused on SharePoint. And so they rebranded it uh, a while back, and they call it SharePoint Designer. So SharePoint Designer is a tool that you can install on your workstation and you open up a SharePoint site. Um, when you open up SharePoint Designer, you tell it you want to open a site, you give it the URL, it connects to the SharePoint site and loads it into this program. Now you have sort of a WYSIWYG way of designing that page, moving things around, adding CSS components, uh, editing master pages, um, adding new HTML code. So not only is it WYSIWYG, it also gives you the code behind the scenes. So you could do some direct code editing if you wanted to. So it's a nice tool for designing some of that stuff. Now, it also lets you build and create workflows. So it's got a workflow designer inside of it as well. 
uh, and that can be really useful. Now, those workflows are not going to be quite as advanced or sophisticated as you might get through Visual Studio. Um, but for someone who is not a true developer, that doesn't know uh, a, a lot of true programming languages, it's a good way to be able to build some custom unique workflows. Same thing with forms. You can create forms uh, through SharePoint Designer as well. So that's a great product and there's a whole nother class just on using SharePoint Designer, how to work with the various different tools, build workflows, build forms, and work with master pages and so on. Then you have Visual Studio. Uh, Visual Studio is obviously the development platform for Microsoft for writing in all sorts of different languages and it includes all kinds of hooks for SharePoint to help you build custom code solutions. For the most part, those custom code solutions would be um, uh, web parts, they could be workflows, more advanced workflows, um, they could be server-side or client-side components that are going to hook into SharePoint in some fashion. Um, we can build Silverlight-based applications through here as well. So obviously Visual Studio is beyond the scope of this course, uh, but you need to understand for your developers that uh, Visual Studio does have plugins specific to building SharePoint-based uh, SharePoint components.